What's the biggest mistake GM has made in the last generation? Well, I think probably we didn't respond fast enough as we should to the changing market needs for quality. And we were kind of starting in a hole, but uh, we had to go back literally and redo our plants and redo our products. We, even with all the help we're getting from our employees, until we'd done that, we couldn't get the quality we needed to be world class. But we know we can do it now. And that was Louis Ruckheiser talking with the then head of General Motors, Roger Smith of Roger and Me fame, back in 1987 about where the auto industry had gone wrong at that point. Now the auto industry is trying to avoid the mistake of not changing fast enough by moving at breakneck speed to an electric vehicle future, one that auto workers fear will leave an awful lot of them behind. Here to put in perspective what a major auto strike can mean is Bloomberg's international economics and policy correspondent, Michael McKee. For the automakers and their employees, this may be as existential a labor conflict as we've seen since the days of Roger Smith. GM, Ford, and Stellantis have made big profits in recent years, and union members now want a piece of those, given the concessions they made in 2008 to keep the automakers alive. Both sides also want to set the work rules for the new world of electronic vehicles. That's why analysts say this could be a long strike. We don't know who will win the face-off, but we can make a pretty educated guess as to who loses. Equity investors. History shows auto strikes don't have a big impact on the macro economy. This walkout could affect up to 146,000 workers, which would represent only about 1% of manufacturing employment. Go back to 1998, when the numbers were similar. 12,700 workers are picketing today. Then it was 9,200 at two plants in Flint, Michigan. Their walkout shut down GM production nationwide, putting 200,000 in total out of work for 54 days. You can see the dramatic impact on the auto industry production numbers and employment in the third quarter of 1998, but you can't see it in the GDP numbers. The losses were made up in the ensuing months. But there can be a big ripple effect in the markets. The 1998 strike cost GM $2.3 billion in profits, and of course, the stock plunged. Shares of parts makers like paint producer H.B. Fuller also fell, as did steel makers. But the impact was felt far beyond the Rust Belt. The New York Times saw revenue fall as auto advertising dried up. A lot of the impact today will, of course, depend on how many end up off the job and for how long. Given this strike is for the first time against all of the big three at the same time, there is reason for investors to be concerned.